thank you, Mike, and good morning, everyone, and thank you for attending today's press conference. The information we are releasing today regarding child sexual abuse and the Diocese of Harrisburg details some very sad moments in our history. This information includes a list of priests accused of sexual abuse and details the new procedures we have put in place in order to protect children, all of which can be found at our new website just launched this morning. As it relates to the list, I wish to emphasize that the list is a list of accusations. We did not make assessments of credibility or guilt in, assess in creating this list. Before we get into more detail about the information we are sharing today, I want to take this opportunity to express my sadness that youth under the church's supervision were abused. Many of those victimized as children continue as survivors to suffer from the harm they experienced in my own name and in the name of the Diocesan Church of Harrisburg, I express profound sorrow and I apologize to the survivors of child sex abuse, to the Catholic faithful, and to the general public for the abuses that took place and for those church officials who failed to protect children. While we seek forgiveness in the name of our diocese, we continue in our sincere request that survivors come forward so that their situations can be addressed. We take seriously both my and the diocese's obligation to prevent such abuse from occurring, to foster healing, and to be transparent. When I became bishop in 2014, one of my first missions was to verify and resolve the status of clergy in the diocese. Over time, we began working with outside counsel and investigators who were able to track down and begin resolving the status of each priest and deacon going back to the 1940s. These efforts helped us to compile a complete list of clergy who have been accused of sexual abuse of a person under age 18. As has been publicly reported, the diocese previously intended to publish this list, yet the Office of Attorney General requested, in order to protect its then ongoing investigation, that the diocese stand down on that effort. The diocese honored that request. Now, with the investigation at an end, and the Supreme Court having issued a stay pending further review, we thought it was appropriate for us to provide to the public a list of clergy with allegations of abuse against them. This investigation has caused the diocese to take a frank look at its past as well as its present. Part of that assessment was an evaluation by the diocese of whether any lingering symbols of the sad history revealed in the di diocese's files remain. Specifically, the diocese evaluated whether the names carried on certain buildings, rooms, and halls in the diocese should remain. I have determined that anyone who has been accused of sexual misconduct and appears on our list will have his name removed from any place of honor throughout the diocese. As a result of a careful review of historical cases, it was also clear that the leadership of the church did not, in every case, take adequate measures while handling matters related to offending clerics. With that reality, and after reviewing information with our legal counsel, along with the unanimous recommendation of the Committee on Naming, which was convened to advise me on these matters, I have directed that the names of every bishop since 1947, the beginning date of the grand jury's investigation, be removed 
from any building, facility, or room in the diocese. I agree with the recommendations I have received from my advisors on these matters, and I have instructed diocesan staff to begin efforts to change names effective immediately. This decision may prove to be controversial, but as a bishop, I strongly believe that leaders of the diocese must hold themselves to a higher standard and must yield honorary symbols in the interest of healing. Because there are no records of these matters during the tenure of Bishop McDevitt, and since the investigation extended back to 1947, 12 years after his death, there will be no change to the naming of Bishop McDevitt High School. Additionally, the Diocese of Harrisburg has reviewed its historical files and learned that prior to the year 2002, the diocese from time to time entered into settlement agreements with survivors of child sexual abuse, and some of those settlement agreements contained confidentiality provisions. Though it has been the diocese's policy for some time not to enforce those confidentiality provisions, I learned that some survivors still feel constrained by them. Accordingly, on behalf of the diocese, I waive any remaining confidentiality rights the diocese has in those confidentiality provisions, while remaining or each, while retaining all other rights the diocese has under those agreements. I take this step about confidentiality so that the survivors can feel free to tell their stories to whomever and whenever they wish. I hope that this step will further aid those survivors and perhaps others in their path to healing. As we move forward, I can assure you that during my time as bishop, the diocese, with guidance of experts in child protection and law enforcement, has done everything in our power to put into place all the safeguards necessary to provide for the well-being and protection of the children entrusted to our care. I can also assure you that any accusation against any diocesan personnel is reported immediately to law enforcement. We are and we have been committed to honesty, transparency, and to ensuring the safety of our children. On the website, you will find a new set of guidelines we are issuing to address child sexual abuse in the diocese. We have taken additional measures and continue to improve our efforts to protect children. These measures include, first, upon receiving any complaints, we turn them over immediately to the local authorities. Second, screening all employees and volunteers with multiple background certifications to ensure that individuals with a record of abuse are ineligible for hire or for volunteering. Teaching students how to stay safe and provide instruction in age-appropriate child abuse awareness programs. Fourth, requiring that all members of the clergy, every employee and every volunteer successfully complete a state-approved online training program on how to recognize and to report child abuse. Fifth and final, providing ID badges for all individuals who have completed the required background certification and training for the Diocesan Youth Protection Program. While we have discussed this dark chapter, I believe it is important that we recognize the positive work the church does by acting as a spiritual center for our communities and the work that we do to help those in need. While we are talking about a very sad chapter, 
I do want to acknowledge all the faithful members of the clergy who have been doing a tremendous amount of good work in a very tough environment. As bishop, I am proud to work with these dedicated priests and deacons who are an authentic presence of God's love in their ministries in our diocese. In addition to being a place of worship for the Catholic community in central Pennsylvania, our Catholic Charities offers a variety the diocese of diocese in Harrisburg spent $8.4 million funding a variety of programs to help the needy. Additionally, many of our parishes are active in supportive outreach to those in need throughout our local communities. The church fills a variety of critical support functions in the community, helping those from all backgrounds, faiths, and economic standing, particularly our youth. In closing, I pray that the love of our God, whose tenderness, compassion, and mercy endures in every age, will continue to restore those who are survivors of all abuse, physical, mental, emotional, and sexual. I pray that the loving heart of Jesus will form us more and more each day into a community that works for justice, protecting those who are most vulnerable in our society, especially our youth. I pray that the Holy Spirit will guide those whose life's work and ministry calls them to care for those who suffer violence and abuse. And I once again ask for forgiveness from all those who are survivors of child sexual abuse, as well as from the members of our Catholic Church and the public who are hurt and who are scandalized in any way by such reprehensible actions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bishop. Uh, at this time, I, I would like the staff to distribute materials. Um, there are three uh, uh, pieces of information that the Bishop went over that we believe just about wrapped up there. So with that, I will introduce uh, Matt Aberstick. He is the uh, counsel for the diocese handling this matter. Yeah. Matt. Thank you, Mike. I want to thank Bishop Gaynor for his remarks today uh, and, and uh, all those in the diocese who have worked with us over the past several years to get to where we are today. A few comments and then I think it's the intention to take some questions. Uh, first, um, and, and I'll get to the list last as you look it over. Uh, first, I, I want to be clear that this uh, process has been labor intensive. We've been working on it for months. Uh, to curate and compile this list has involved a lot of hard work by uh, my colleagues and by personnel of the diocese. A review of all of the historical records, paper and electronic, that we can find. So we believe it's a uh, fairly complete list. Second, although the Bishop Gaynor emphasized this in his statement, I, I think it bears repeating. This is not a list of people who we are calling sexual abusers. This is a list of accusations. We have included on this list, I mean, it is, of course, a, a tough balance to, on the one hand, uh, be transparent and, and, and deal with these issues, and, and, and the other, uh, make sure that we're not uh, being too inclusive. We chose to be over-inclusive in our curation of this list. These, this list uh, compiles as far back as we have records, every individual against whom an allegation was made and that allegation subsequently was not disproven by law enforcement. Uh, so there are, we, we erred on the side of including uh, folks on this list who we may never know, as you'll see for in a minute, uh, see why in a minute, we may never know whether those individuals uh, did anything wrong and we don't purport to say any of these individuals did anything wrong. We simply list the allegations that are in our files. And now finally, let me explain how we categorize uh, the list. In, 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 and we have three broad categories that we, we use. The first category 
are those uh, clergy, seminarians, uh, deacons, against whom allegations were made when they were alive. So the individual was alive, the allegation came in. The second broad category is uh, the, the, the converse, allegations against those individuals uh, who were passed on at the time the first allegation came in. And then the third broad category uh, includes allegations against priests in which the allegation was made in a diocese other than the Diocese of Harrisburg. And as far as we know, there was no allegation of any misconduct made while that person was in Harrisburg, in the Diocese of Harrisburg itself. With that, I, I, I concluded what I wanted to say. I'm prepared to take some questions. Have any of these priests who have been reported received any form of criminal charges? The, the answer is um, yes. I mean, many of the priests on this list who have had that type of sanction applied are publicly known. They've been reported on. As a, I think, generality today, I'm not going to talk about specific cases because there, there are a fair number of names on there. We will entertain subsequent questions about specific individuals if, if, if you want. But, but, but the strict, strictly speaking, the answer is yes. Oh, thank you. We, so, um, we spent a fair amount of time thinking through what information we would present on the website. Uh, the information on the website will include this list, and within uh, a very short period of time, you'll be able to, for each person on the list who's accused, uh, probably hover over the person's name and see a list of all of the, the assignments of that priest. So uh, that functionality is not ready today, but it will be shortly. So not only will we be able to see the name of all the accused from the Diocese of Harrisburg, You'll be able to click on each one and determine uh, in which parishes that person served. Mark. Uh, uh, two questions. One is, do you have any political figures on settlement numbers and uh, dollar figures? And secondly, uh, as you know, the Supreme Court is currently litigating this question about what to do about uh, uh, people who are innocent who might end up in the statewide grand jury report. You're saying basically there could be innocent people in here and you're putting them on the internet anyway? Here's what I'm saying, Mark. It, 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 as I said, it just... We made it very clear, we're not determining guilt or innocence with this list. We are reporting the historic fact that an allegation of abuse was made against that person. That's it. We don't take the next step and decide whether that person did anything wrong. Frankly, that's not for us. That's for law enforcement. And I think that's something that law enforcement for some time has been asking and wanting to make sure the diocese does. This diocese has done that for quite some time. We're, we're not in the in the guilt business. And what about settlements? Uh, I don't have that one. Do you know, are, are there, is your list the same as what the grand jury will show? I, so I'm not going to talk about the grand jury report. It's not appropriate for me to talk about it. Um, I, 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 I can tell you that there are, they are not the same. 